about everyone. We're so blessed by this special item this morning. Our church has so many hidden talent, very musical talented people here. So we are blessed by your special item. Thank you for singing such a beautiful song. Who would like to uh, hear more? There's, there's a lot of people. Look at that. Look at your hands. Look, look, at, look back there. Everybody wants to hear more. So that, that, that is fantastic job. Thank you very much for the worship coordinator for organizing and planning such an uplifting worship service. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you all for having me again, speaking to you. This is my second time in this month. I'm not sure you have enough with me. Thank you very much for saying that. I'm delighted to be here as always. And I'm so glad to see many of you. And I praise God for bringing you here today. That is God's grace that drawing you into this century. This Sabbath is a special Sabbath. As you know, we are here to commemorate the sacrifice of Jesus that made way back 2,000, more than 2,000 years ago, stay means so much to us as believers. Uh, there will be no hope for salvation for each one of us if it's not because of Jesus. Amen? If we appreciate the gift of God through the sacrifice of Jesus, we will be very excited to be a part of this holy communion because it's all about, all about Jesus. A day before Jesus was taken to be crucified, he knew that he didn't have much time left to spend with his disciple. He had so much to tell them what they need to know. Even though for the last three and a half years, they were with him, they follow him, they were not quite sure who he was and what his mission was. They did not know the main reason why he called them, when he called them to follow him. What he really wants them to do, they have no idea. Jesus prayed for them and he longed to see them thrive even without his presence. And he knew, Jesus knew that they were going to face many challenges. He deeply concerned about their faith and he deeply concerned about their well-being. That is why he took his time before he's going to the, cro the cross. He spent a few hours teaching them some of the most important messages for them to understand and live by. That is what I'm going to share with you today, friends. This message is so critical, so important that we should not neglect or we should not ignore, that we must pay closely attention Otherwise, we will be survived and thrive as a Christian. How can I live? That's a personal question. How can we live as a thriving Christian? The truth, I must say, a thriving Christian life is possible only, only by a constant connection with God. Jesus put it in this way. John chapter 15, verse 4 to 5. John 15, verse 4 to 5. Abide in me, I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, and let it abide in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. 
you are the branches. He who would abide in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do what? Nothing. I want you to look at this verse today. I'm pretty sure you have read this before. Now you are reading it. I want you to realize the truth that Jesus is talking about here. Abide in me. What is abide mean? Abide mean to stay where we spoke to be. Listen to this carefully. Abide means to stay where we spoke to be. To stay where we belong to. To stay connect in Christ. To stay in a close, intimate relationship with the Lord. This is our possession as a true converted believer. That is to abide in Christ. That is our possession, friend. No word else. That is our position. Just like a branch, always they need to connect to the vine for its life and or for its nutrition, for nourishment. For as a believer, we need to stay connected with Christ through Bible readings, through prayer, through fellowship with one another in love. That's how we abide in Christ. You know, friend, I find it very useful for me to read my Bible every day. To read my Bible every day. Just reading through a few chapters. Sometimes I read it in the morning. If I be, sometimes I read it in the night, during the night. But I make sure I don't skip that reading my Bible every single day. I feel very happy. I feel that I am prepared to face my challenges and knowing that God is with me. And through his inspired word, he is leading my day and he's guiding me. That's how I feel when I abide in Christ through prayer, through my devotion, through reading his word. I testify this to you my friends, and I encourage you to do the same, to do the same. We must abide in Christ continually and stay connected with Christ in every possible way. The branch of the vine can only bear fruit if it still remain attached to the vine. In the same way, the only the believer, all the believer, can only bear the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit and Christ-like character by constantly abide in Christ and stay connected with Christ in every moment. John chapter 15, verse 5. I am the vine, you are the what? The branches. He who abides in me, I in him. Bear no fruit. Is that right? Bear much fruit. That is the reward of bearing in Christ. If you want to see whether you are in Christ or not, Observe your life and examine your life. Whether I am bearing, am I bear any fruit? Am I carrying, am I revealing any Christ-like character in me? Abide in me, I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. So, friend, Christ is the vine. Let me remind you again. Christ is the vine, and we are the branches. It is not the branch giving its life to the vine, 
but simply the life of the vine flow to the branches. What does that mean? What does it mean? Sometimes we pray, Lord, help me to live my life for you. Lord, help me to live my life for you. But think about it. It would be better to pray, Lord, live out your life through me. Live out your life through me because without you, I can do nothing. A vine branch has only one great purpose. A vine branch has only one purpose. That is to bear fruit. To bear fruit. It is no use for making houses. It is no use for to make, make it a furniture. It is not even good for firewood. A the branch of the vine, it's good for only that is to bear fruit, to bear fruit. In the same way, friend, in the same way, the main reason of the life of every believer is to bear fruit. Nothingness, nothingness. Just like the branch, it's only good for to bear fruit, not for making furniture. I mentioned it before. Now for making houses, not even for firewood, they are only for bearing fruit. Why bearing fruit is so important? Why bearing fruit is so important? John chapter 15, verse 8. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be what? My disciples, my disciples, by bearing much fruit, we bring glory and honor to God. We bring glory and honor to God in our life. So in other words, if we don't bring any, if we don't bear any fruit in our life, what does that mean? We do not bring any glory and honor to God. We, we don't bring any glory and honor to God if we don't bear any fruit. John chapter 15, verse 5 to 10. I want you to notice, if, if you can put, it, put the verses in the passage on the screen, that would be appreciated. John chapter 15, verse 5. I want you to notice abide in me. How many times John repeat that in this passage? And remember that this is what Jesus speaking to his disciple. I'm reading the word of Jesus. I'm the vine, you are the branches. He who abide in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Verse 6. If any, anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is wither. And they gather them and throw them into the fire. They are burned. Verse 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Verse 8, by this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Verse 9, as the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in me. In my love. Verse 10, if you keep my commandment, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my father's commandment and abide in his love. Verse 11, these things I have spoken to you, that my joy 
may remain in you and that your joy may be full. So how many times abide in me repeated in this verse? Anybody realize, account? What is the lucky number? Seven times repeated in this verse. Jesus tried to emphasize, tried to give that message to his disciple, to every one of us, how important abiding in him. Another reason why abiding in him is so crucial for us as his followers is that we found in verse 11 of chapter 15, the book of John. Why abiding in him so important? Verse 11, this thing I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, that your joy may be full. What is Jesus trying to say here? Where does Jesus find his joy? Simply in verse 10, he's talking about, if you kept my commandment, you will abide in my love, just as I have what? Kept my father's commandment and abiding in his love. Jesus found his joy in obeying his father's commandment and doing his way. And Jesus found his joy in trusting the love of his father and completely surrender his life to his plan. And Jesus found his joy in constant communion with his fathers. You know, friend, he wants us to have the joy too. He wants us to have the joy through depending in God. Completely, through depending in God completely. And Jesus said, you can have that promise, the joy, the, the promise of joy, if you get my commandment. If you obey and trust me, you can have that joy today. It's not just half, not just partial joy. You will have your joy, what? Your joy may be fulfilled. Jesus wants to give us joy, friends. He found his joy in trusting God and abiding in his fathers. He wants us to do the same. He wants to share his joy with us. He wants us to have his joy by trusting God. God in our life. What does it mean to remain or to abide in Christ? This is what we're going to demonstrate today through, holy, through communion service. What does it mean to abide in Christ? Number one, I want to share with you four points today. Number one, to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That is what we abide in Christ's mean. To believe that Jesus is what? The Son of God. The Son of God. You will only remain and abide in him if you know who he is. In John chapter, 1 John chapter 4 verse 15, Jesus says that, Whoever confess, in other words, believe, that Jesus is the Son of God, abide what? Abide in Him. My translation in New King James Version. Whoever confesses and believes that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in Him and He in God. That is what abiding in Christ means. Believe Jesus is the Son of God. And number two, what does abiding in him mean? To receive him as our Lord and Savior. It is not just enough to believe. A lot of people in this world believe 
and they said they are Christian. They said they believe the Bible, they believe Jesus. But they never received him in their life. It is not really abide in me. Abide in Christ means to believe in as the Son of God and also to receive him as the Lord of their life. The Lord of our life. John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as receive him, to them he give the right to become the children of God. To those who believe in his name. You know, when you receive Christ and you are recognized, you are adopted in God's, as God's children. We are God's people. We are in the family of God. We are the children of God. Number three, what is abiding in Christ mean? To do what he can mean. Abiding in Christ means doing what he command us to do. First John chapter 3, verse 24. Now he who keep his commandment abide in him. And by this we know that he abide in us by the spirit whom he has given us. So abiding in Christ is what doing what he command us to do. Point number four. What does abiding in Christ mean? Abiding in Christ means to relate, to have fellowship in love with our brother, sister in Christ. You know, sometimes we trust God, sometimes we believe God, we say that. But we want we don't want to be around with our brother, sister. We don't want to speak to them or talk to them. If possible, we don't want to do anything with them. That is not abiding in Christ really mean. Abiding in Christ is loving, trying to love other people, our brother, sister in Christ, just like the way Jesus loved us. John chapter 15, verse 12. This is my commandment, that you love what? One another as I have loved you. How does Jesus love us? And what he wants us to do, what he wants us to love our brother and sister. Just like the way he loved us. We are, are we lovable? We are constantly breaking God's law. But Christ stay love us. And he wants us to do the same. Love each other as I have loved you. That is what we are demonstrating today. Abiding in Christ means to believe who Christ is. He is the Son of God. And to receive him in our life. And to relate one another in love. And to keep his commandment. That is what abiding in Christ means. That is what we are going to demonstrate today. Just as Christ showed his love to his disciple, doing a servant job, and serving them by washing their feet, he wants us to do the same to relate and to forgive one another, to forgive one another. John chapter 13, verse 14 and 15. If I then, your Lord and Master, have watched your feet, you also ought to watch one another feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. So, friend, this is our opportunity to demonstrate our love for Jesus. To demonstrate we are abiding in Christ. 
and to demonstrate that we really love our brother, sister by washing each other's feet and forgiving each other's feet. The story of Jesus, page 97, verse 5. In this way, Christ taught them that they should help one another. Instead of seeking who is better, each should be willing to serve one another. And story of Jesus, Ellen White book, page 97, paragraph 6. The Savior came into this world to work for others. He lived to help and serve those who are needy and sinful. And he wants us to do as he did. So, friend, now is our opportunity to show that the way Jesus loved us and the way Jesus treated us by humble ourselves, forgive each other, and serve one another in love. Now we're going to demonstrate that by washing each other's feet. Let us divide for the first washing. May God bless you all.